Nonstick pans can be both a blessing and a curse. They come in all shapes, sizes, core materials, and coatings. No doubt nonstick pans can simplify things in the kitchen with virtually no cleanup, but they are notorious for failing and having some big limitations. In this video, I'll be revisiting nonstick aluminum pans and discussing their pros and cons compared to cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel. Does a nonstick pan have a place in your kitchen? Full disclosure, I have one big gripe. Let's dive in. Nonstick pans and aluminum pans. Oh boy. Those are the two things that I didn't really necessarily like, or at least in past videos for the purpose of this channel, which has so far been aimed at beginners and new cooks, I haven't necessarily been too favorable. But there's a reason for that. And it's not necessarily nonstick pans, but how they're being marketed to beginners. This video is really focusing on those that want to take their cooking skills to the next level. So for those of you that have followed me and have watched my previous videos, you'll know that in general, I stick to the big three, cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel. And that still holds true. So I've done a video on why I personally do not own an aluminum pan, where I went over some of my personal reasons. That video will also give you really good insight and background or context to this video. So if you have some time, Go check that video out. Let's start off with the pros of non-stick. Obviously, one of the biggest pros is things don't stick if the coating's good. You're gonna need a lot less oil and fat to cook your food, which in turn means a healthier diet. They're best for really sticky or delicate dishes. Think of scallops, cheese, tartare, sugar desserts, things like that. So what are some of the cons of non-stick pans? Well, the coating can easily be damaged using metal utensils or even your dishwasher. It's always recommended to wash your nonstick pans by hand. Likewise, some cooking sprays, usually nonstick cooking sprays, which is kind of counterintuitive, can damage the coating. Also, they cannot be used for high heat temperatures, and that high heat temperature range is usually above 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Always use low to medium low heat and watch your burner's output power. Toxic fumes at high temperatures can be released. And that actually brings me to my next point. They're not always oven safe. And some of the cheaper ones will have like plastic handles or rubber handles or something like that, a variation of that. Typically better pans are somewhat oven safe, but I highly recommend just avoid any high temperatures. Coating quality differs greatly with nonstick pans. You really have to do your homework and make sure you're buying quality. Like with anything else that I've recommended with you, quality does matter, but with nonstick pans, be extra careful. Another con with nonstick pans, the lifespan can be anywhere from six months to really cheap ones to all the way up to about two years, but they don't last a lifetime, so don't expect them to last forever. The coating usually will chip or flake off eventually. So what are some of the biggest pros to aluminum? Well, again, I've covered this in that previous video that I mentioned earlier, but I'll go over it again. The biggest pro to aluminum is the cost of aluminum. It's really cheap. And if you are on a budget, you really can't beat aluminum as far as cost is concerned. Aluminum reacts to temperature changes quickly and it has excellent thermal conductivity. It's also very lightweight and it's really easy to handle. So what are some of the cons to aluminum? Well, bare aluminum can react to foods, usually acidic foods. Acidic foods will cause aluminum to deteriorate and discolor. Also, another con to aluminum, especially cheap aluminum pans, they can easily be dented or damaged. You'll actually find a lot of aluminum pans that are really thin, really cheaply made, that have completely warped, for example, to warp really easily, or they've been completely bent because they were dropped. Bare aluminum will leach into your food, and that does kinda bring up some health concerns, but usually you'll be tasting a metallic taste in your food, so, it's not that great. That's actually one of my main concerns with bare aluminum. So because I love the big three, I wanted to compare nonstick to each of them. So let's start off with cast iron and nonstick. What are the differences? What can you expect? Cast iron can actually be incredibly nonstick because of the seasoning process. And the more that you use it, 
the more non-stick it gets. Weight is definitely gonna be the first thing that you're gonna notice between cast iron and a non-stick aluminum pan, for example. Heat retention on cast iron is absolutely nuts because of its mass. The thing is huge, it's heavy, it's dense, making it the sear king. And cast iron's gonna last you a lifetime with proper care. You will pass it down to your loved ones. It's gonna be a family heirloom. Keep in mind that cast iron requires maintenance and seasoning in order to get the most of it. And cast iron will react with acidic foods that can likewise strip that seasoning. Cast iron can be used anywhere on all stovetops, gas, electric, induction, on your barbecue grill, on a campfire, in a campfire. It's virtually indestructible. Now, obviously there's limitations. Don't go out to the range shooting your cast iron skillet. That will probably do it. Cast iron is slow to heat up and cool down, so it doesn't really react to temperature changes too quickly. So you really have to keep that in mind. If you overshot your cast iron, you're gonna have to lower your temperatures as soon as you realize that, or you might even have to take your proteins out or whatever, but it's not the fastest to react to temperature changes because it retains heat so well. Okay, now let's talk about one of my favorite pans, carbon steel, and let's compare it to a nonstick pan. Carbon steel is basically cast iron 2.0, and it's the middle ground between cast iron and stainless steel lovers. Carbon steel can be extremely nonstick. It really does share that with cast iron because you do have to season carbon steel just like you would with cast iron, but the more that you use it, the more nonstick it's gonna get. Carbon steel reacts really well with temperature changes and adjustments making it very forgiving. It still retains heat really, really well, but it reacts to temperature changes much faster than cast iron. Not as fast as stainless steel, but fast enough. Carbon steel shares the same seasoning maintenance and acidic food weaknesses that cast iron has, so keep that in mind. Carbon steel can be used anywhere just like cast iron. Just watch out for oven limitations from certain manufacturers that coat their handles. Carbon steel is lighter than cast iron, but still heavier than stainless steel and aluminum, so that's something to consider as well. And finally, carbon steel will last forever and become a family heirloom just like cast iron. Cast iron is really popular in the US and carbon steel is really popular overseas. Okay, now let's get to the opposite spectrums. Nonstick versus stainless steel. Stainless steel can be used to make anything. It does not react to acidic foods. Most stainless steel cookware out there today now is also oven safe or broiler safe. I know like for example, all clad, I think it's safe in the oven or broiler up to what, 650 degrees or 700 degrees, something like that. Generally speaking, stainless steel is almost as indestructible as cast iron, but not quite there. And most importantly, it does not leach anything significantly or produce a metallic taste. So stainless steel is generally considered very, very safe and healthy. One of stainless steel's superpowers and what it's really known for is it produces amazing fond for out of this world sauces. If you don't know what fond is, it's the sticky bits that are left behind after you've just seared something. Clad stainless steel can combine aluminum and copper to make a super pan with all of the benefits of each of those materials and less of their cons. So that's a big pro to stainless steel, clad stainless steel. Stainless steel is extremely responsive and can also retain a lot of heat if you have a copper core pan. But really, that also makes it incredibly unforgiving. You can easily shoot past your temperatures or go way below them. Finally, stainless steel can be very sticky. Again, it's really good at making fawn. So it requires more oil or fat to cook with. So if you are health conscious, keep that in mind. But if properly preheated, stainless steel can actually be very surprisingly non-stick. Okay, for the next segment, I wanted to do an egg test to prove that last point. This is not a how to fry an egg. I'm not trying to teach you guys how to fry an egg in this segment. I'm trying to demonstrate the differences between nonstick properties and how forgiving each pan is for beginners. So I'm going to purposely break the yolk. I know that's gonna break some of your hearts out there. And I'm gonna keep flipping the egg to make it stick as much as possible. Okay, let's start off the egg test with some avocado oil and the nonstick pan. I'm gonna be using very little oil and actually, I'm gonna be using a lot less than that. I'm gonna grab a paper towel and try to remove some oil just to show you how nonstick is extremely forgiving. I was planning on doing an egg test for the cast iron and carbon steel pans too, but at the time of making this video, eggs were crazy expensive and the video was already too long. 
Okay, you can see here that the nonstick pan is sticking a bit, so I went ahead and broke the yolk and tried to get it to stick even more. I used my spatula to kind of ease it up a little bit, but once I did, the nonstick pan got going. And of course, one of the main selling points to nonstick pans is the cleanup, which was a breeze using just a paper towel. Okay, now let's switch things up a bit and use our copper core stainless steel pan. Stainless steel pans need to be preheated properly. I'm using a technique called the light and frost effect, which basically tells you if your pan's too cold. I did a video on preheating and preheating techniques. If you're interested, I'll put it here. Keep in mind, you do have to use more oil or fat with stainless steel. It's just the name of the game. Okay, with stainless steel, sometimes it doesn't need any help whatsoever. But for this particular time, because I was distracted with filming, I did have to use the spatula to give the egg a bit of a nudge. But once I did and it loosened up, the pan was non-stick and the egg was slipping and sliding everywhere. And lo and behold, it kind of reminds you of the non-stick pan, doesn't it? And as you can see here, I did several flips trying to get the egg to stick, but the pan was completely non-stick. Except for that initial part that did stick to the pan, but that was due to user error. Everything else is a thing of beauty. All right, let's talk about cleanup for a second and that sticky bit that was left over. Turns out it wasn't very sticky at all and I was easily able to completely remove it using a plastic scraper and then wipe everything away with a paper towel. So we know how important it is to preheat your pan, but let's go back to non-stick. And this time I want to use a bit more oil. And in comparison to stainless steel, it's a lot less oil. I also want to start off with a colder pan, and this should really demonstrate how forgiving non-stick is to new beginners. And this time we did not need the spatula. The egg released all on its own. We got a perfect flip and the yolk was intact, but I was able to do the same thing with stainless steel. It's just more convenient with non-stick, but that's really the superpower of non-stick pans. It's important to note that the stainless steel pan did a great job as long as you follow the fundamentals. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, now let me share with you some tips that I have on buying a good nonstick pan. Get a high quality base grade pan, aluminum or stainless steel, and if it's NSF certified, that's a really good thing. So look for NSF certified. Avoid PFOA coatings. Coating really does matter and can be toxic. Try to get a pan that is coated with multiple layers and clearly labels its coating and what's not in it. If you can, try to get a pan that's oven safe for 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That should give you some margins, but generally speaking, don't use nonstick pans for high heat whatsoever. I like pans that have a metal handle with a removable silicone grip. The pan should be heavy duty and thick. The manufacturer should have a decent warranty. Any good manufacturer out there will provide some sort of a warranty. The one I'm gonna recommend actually has a lifetime warranty. A really important thing to do is to follow the manufacturer's first time instructions. And it's often something to do with seasoning your pan with some oil and lightly heating it up. The one that I bought tells you to get some oil and spread it around with a paper towel and then put your pan on medium to medium low heat for around three to four minutes. And that's basically seasoning the pan for first time use. Okay, now let's talk about the pan that I personally recommend and that I bought. I wanted to recommend a pan that was a great pan, but also budget friendly. And the one that I bought here is made by Trey Montina. It's the Trey Montina Professional Aluminum Nonstick Restaurant Frying Pan. This pan comes in at right around $28, so it should be under $30, and it's the 10 inch model. So what are some of the reasons and the features that sold me on this pan? Well, first off, it is NSF 
certified for commercial use. It's made out of 344 heavy gauge aluminum. The company describes it as their high performance reinforced PFOA free non-stick dishwasher safe professional use pan. It will work with gas, electric, and ceramic glass stovetops. It is not induction ready because it's aluminum. So you do have to buy a plate in order to use it on your induction stovetop. Let's talk about the handle for a bit. The handle is cast stainless steel with three rivets. It does come with a removable silicone handle to manage heat and keep your hands safe. It also comes with a lifetime warranty. Now, I would imagine that the coating probably doesn't have a lifetime warranty, but the company has a really good reputation and you can contact them if you have any problems. So it's nice to know that the actual pan does have a lifetime warranty. It's probably very similar to all clad, if I'm being honest. The pan is made in Brazil, it's not made in the US and if that's something that bothers you well full disclosure it's made in Brazil it does not bother me at all a quality pan is a quality pan according to them they say that the pan is oven safe up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius for use without the silicone grip and then with the silicone grip it's only 400 degrees Fahrenheit I don't know how true that is I mean this is a non-stick pan again I just generally speaking keep things on low heat. So honestly, what do I think about this nonstick pan? Well, the pan has been fantastic. It's been great. I have not experienced any warping whatsoever. It has been solid all the way through. It has a solid base and it's made of high quality materials at a great budget price. Also, it's really highly rated on Amazon with a lot of 18 and 24 month updated reviews and the updated reviews are saying that it's still going strong including the non-stick coating i also see this pan this manufacturer in a lot of small restaurants small kitchens so i don't know if that means anything to you but that's one of the reasons why i bought this pan because i did see it okay let me close out the video by explaining what the purpose of this video was and what i want you the viewer to take away from it I got by just fine without non-stick. Even when I cooked things that were sticky or supposedly were gonna be sticky like eggs or scrambled eggs or scallops or whatever, you name it. Those three pans, cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel have taken care of me really, really well. I don't hate non-stick pans and I think coated aluminum pans have a lot of bang for your buck and a lot of great benefits. If you have a non-stick pan and you like them, great. You are not less of a cook. The main point of this video is to show you how important it is to learn how to do things the right way and learn the fundamentals. I truly believe if you can cook on cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel, you can cook on anything. Every tool has its place in the kitchen and there's no question that nonstick is convenient. I can definitely turn off my brain and make more mistakes with nonstick. There's days when I'm lazy and I don't wanna really focus too much. A nonstick pan is wonderful. But I will say that there's certain dishes that make sense and make nonstick the clear winner or the clear pan that you should reach for. I just personally hate that it teaches beginners bad habits if it's the only pan that they use or it's the first pan that they use because they think that all pans are gonna be the same. And then they wanna grow and they wanna learn more as a cook and become better. And they really struggle to get rid of those bad habits. Nonstick is a great addition after you have used cast iron, carbon steel, or stainless steel and really understood the fundamentals and the tools of the kitchen and how to use them to benefit from those fundamentals. Adding a nonstick pan after is a great idea. Are nonstick pans used by professionals in restaurants? Absolutely. They are used by professionals in restaurants all the time, but they know their limitations and they understand their benefits and they're used selectively. Personally, I'll be using this pan more and I'll be adding it to my kitchen toolbox. Thanks to you guys for reminding me in the first place why I dislike these pans so much, which had nothing to do with the pans themselves, but had more to do with how they were being marketed to beginners. That's it for me, guys. I'll catch you on the next video.